trip luncheon, and it's casseroles, all different kinds of casseroles. Please come and eat. We need you um, to eat and enjoy um, the, the $5 that you give to that is uh, a way of supporting um, that mission trip. And then um, I want to let you know that next week, our Sunday's focus will be on the environment, and we're going to have a, a special community forum at 9 a.m., and we've got some panelists. Sandy Captain will be here from the Sierra Club. Bill Jones will be here from the Isaac Walton League and Eric Anderson from the Elgin Sustainability Commission. And they're going to all be talking about care of the environment, global change, and what we can do about it. Global climate change, I should say, and what we can do about it. So uh, please come and invite your neighbors to come and be a part of that as well. Um, I want to let you know that on Thursdays, we've just started our study group on forgiveness. This Sunday, this Thursday, we'll um, actually be seeing a video and starting a book about it. If you would like to be a part of that, it is open to men and women. That group meets at 1030 on Thursday mornings. If you're not available on Thursday mornings and would like to be a part of an evening group, Talk to me about it, and I will see if we can get one coordinated and set up on a time that you can all meet. So let me know if that interests you. And then this Friday is our Frog Friday, which is our children's um, youth group, and it meets from 6 to 8.30 right here in our fellowship hall. Um, Michael Noland has an announcement to make. Good morning, everyone. I know you can hear me. I'm speaking into this like it was an ice cream cone, and I know you can hear me, like I was told to. So very briefly, thank you very much. Um, as many of you know, I stood for election this past November, and things turned out pretty well for us. So on January 24th, Judge Dalton, who I note is backsliding here today, <laughs> oh, sorry, just saying, um, will swear me in. Uh, down at the King County Branch Court. Okay, that will be at 3.30 uh, on January 24th, and I would very much uh, welcome all of you to attend that, and thank you so much. And one last thing, go Bears. Uh, on this day of Epiphany, let us worship and praise God as we ponder the gifts that we bring to the Christ child.
gather in to worship God by offering praise and gathering together as a community, but also in opening ourselves to God in honesty uh, through confession and prayer and openness as to who we are and what the needs of our lives are. I invite you to join with me in our prayer of confession as we begin our worship. O oh, gracious God, we gather here this morning knowing of a dozen things we could have done or not done that could be called sin, but they are but symptoms of a deeper malady, a brokenness to life, an alienation from you and from our true selves. For the symptoms of our deep malady, we can try harder, learn from our mistakes, and live smarter. For the deep brokenness and alienation, we can only seek your love and grace. Heal us, forgive us, renew us in the ways and love of Jesus our Christ. Amen. And let us read together what we know is true. In Jesus Christ, God embraces us with love, forgives us, renews us. We may live in peace in the fullness of life. Amen. another with the peace of Christ. reading is from the second chapter of Matthew. It's the visit of the wise men for Epiphany. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was, is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, 
are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Will you join with me in prayer? O oh, speak to us in your word, O oh holy God, that it may live in our hearts and our imaginations and in what we do. In Jesus' name, amen. The problem with familiar stories in the Bible, like the visit of the Magi, is that we know them so well, we sometimes don't know them at all. For example, we'll do a quiz. How many magi were there? Three? It doesn't say, actually. There were three gifts. We presume there were three magi, but there could have been ten. There was more than one, but that's all we know. Did they arrive on the night that Jesus was born? What? No. Uh, since Herod wanted all the children under two years of age killed, we presume Jesus wasn't, was under two when they arrived. But it wasn't, as you hear in some parts of the world, it wasn't on Christmas Eve itself. Did they come in with the shepherds? No, because the shepherds are in a different gospel. They're not in this one. 20th century people hear a Bible story and we think, did it really happen that way? But first century people hear a Bible story and they ask, now what does this mean? And that's what Matthew is trying to tell us. He's trying to tell us what it means that Jesus came, who Jesus was. And so the important part of the passage is the gifts that they're bringing. Uh, there is the gift of gold because you give gold to kings. Uh, Republicans know that kings always want gold, and so you have to do that. Uh, the, just be partisan. Uh, the um, frankincense, because frankincense is what you use in the temple to cleanse the people and to carry, carry our prayers up to heaven. It is something that connects us with God. And myrrh, because in a society that did not embalm and did not cremate and waited three days before burial, this is what you put on a body to keep it from smelling, like we do. And so what Matthew is telling us is that this little child Jesus will grow up to be king, to be our Lord, will be the Son of God, that which connects us with the Almighty, and someone who will die, uh, die for us. And each of those themes that's unpacked in the rest of the Gospel of Matthew. Well, so Matthew's told us who Jesus is with this. But now the baton passes to us. Who do we say that Jesus is? How do we reveal him to the world? And part of my job is to pay attention uh, to you. 
and to ask myself and to ask you, well, who's Jesus for you? And we've heard a variety of responses over the month of December from those of you who have brought your own personal witness. Uh, they have not always been on the same page, uh, but they are all in the same book because they, we are a people of diversity of thought and independence in our thinking. But I think I see three big gifts that this church offers to one another and to the broader community. The first is uh, we're a people of healing, a place of healing. I know of two or three Bible study groups that will gather for an hour's Bible study and spend a half an hour of it asking, so how are you this week? What's happened in your life? And this goes around, and then eventually they get to the Bible story. I won't mention any names, but, you know, we could go to Monday nights for the beer burgers in the Bible, and, you know, we, it goes on and on. Uh, and this is not a bad thing. Uh, there was once a study of the different types of therapy groups, which was trying to discover which was the most healing. And then they distilled all of the things that seemed to work well, and they put them together as a best practices list, and then asked what type of group best approximates these best practices. And they came up with, well, it's a church study group. It's a women's fellowship group, where you get that non-judgmental caring, that emphasis on being as you are, on sharing, but also gathering for a purpose that's larger than just yourself. We'll spend up to 10 minutes in our worship services sharing joys and concerns and talking about what we are going to pray about. Some of us are uncomfortable in terms of asking God to do something for us because um, it's not necessarily in God's hands, we think. But that doesn't stop us from raising up requests that have been given to us by people, some of whom we don't even know very well, who for sure want us to pray for Cousin James. Uh, it's part of who we are, and it's an important part of who we are. It's why the opioid addiction mission emphasis caught on here, because we know there's a crisis in our community and we want to be a part of the healing of the community. This is part of who we are. This is a gift that we bring to the community. A second gift uh, is in support of that community. And, and boy, we, there are a bunch of themes that come together. First, if there's an opportunity to do good, we want to do it. Uh, give us a chance to volunteer in the community, and we have people who will be there. Uh, sometimes the problem is we have too many people who want to volunteer or we want to change things around during the course of a year so we're not always there at the time of need. But the, the desire to be part of the solution is there. There's an awareness that responding to a need and helping someone in need sometimes just treats symptoms and doesn't go to root causes of what's causing those needs in the first place. And we're aware that that really edges awfully close to the political. Uh, you know, we're, we're nervous in general when we talk about justice in the church, even though it's something we need to talk about, because otherwise we're just chasing symptoms and we're not bringing about any change. But we certainly have people who have been empowered, emboldened, and have gone forth from this place to slay dragons and to do the political work that's necessary to bring about change. That those politics tend to happen not in this building, but outside of this building. And that's a point of which we're very comfortable with and take great pride in those members of our church who are active in the community, in the legislature, as judges, uh, who are doing the work of, of God in the community. So call it justice, call it doing good. This is a core value of this church. It's one that stretches back uh, years and years and years to our founding, really, when we were one of the early voices against slavery in this country. A third gift is um, 
of our beliefs and our style of believing. Uh, on the one hand, we're a place which is really pretty firmly rooted in a spirituality that's centered on Jesus. And we have a lot of people for whom that's really what they're talking about. And if you're not talking about Jesus, they will remind you, uh, Pastor, you're not talking about Jesus enough in worship services. But we also have people who are really more focused on God, and we have a wide variety of interpretations. Uh, we are of a congregational tradition which holds to the liberty of conscience. And so we all have our own takes on things, and we share them generally pretty comfortably, knowing that uh, I don't have all of the answers, and neither do you, but we all need to share those answers to get the community of the congregation, because that strengthens us all, even as we always have liberty to believe what we want to believe, as opposed to what others want us to believe. So we don't recite creeds. Or if we do, we're quick sometimes to tell us which part of the creeds we don't believe. Uh, and we talk about and wrestle with what we say and believe. So in December, we had a variety of people talking about how Jesus was important to them. And there was, shall we say, a very wide array of opinions on that, opinions and experiences. And that was just fine. No one came up to me afterwards and said, oh, did you hear what she said? That was awful. Uh, because that would have been inappropriate. Uh, listening to one another, being strengthened and informed by what one another says, that's uh, what makes this place this place. And in a time in life when over a third to half of the people in our broader communities uh, don't believe in God, be in large part because what they hear from churches is judgmental and condemning and puts people down, uh, this voice of inclusiveness is extremely important. It is a way of saying, here is a way that you can believe that we have always believed uh, that you can be a part of as, as well. Now, all of these gifts work only if we bring them. Um, if we sit back and think of them as noble thoughts in our minds, they don't do much. But if we bring them to God, bring them to the community, then they really become gifts that can be used and can be a blessing to other people. And like the Magi bringing the gifts forward, they are ways that we can reveal Christ in our presence and in our community in ways that are so desperately needed. Amen.
children or are they still coming okay so we'll sing the song first sing, sing the song first sing the song first sing the song first no no they're together mm-hmm. oh well it's the trouble when you have a story a sermon that's made for three-year-olds and then you know i think so i go okay <laughs> John, John, John could do three. No. Well, the question was, if you were coming to uh, Bethlehem and you were bringing gifts that were going to reveal who Jesus was and what he means to the world, what are you going to bring? Gift cards. <laughs> what? What else would you give? Gold? Yep. Frank, why would you give Frank? You know, it's been done. Yeah. You might need some more. Yeah. What else would you give? Chocolate. They didn't have that then. No. Yeah, candy, chocolate. Flowers? Five flowers. They look nice. Okay. You'd give soda to a baby? Yeah. yeah. It's, that's true. You'd give, well, okay. You get into difference of parenting here. Uh, what else? A pacifier for his mother? Mm hmm. What would you give to a baby? Diapers, yeah. Because in those days, they didn't have diapers. Yeah. Yeah. Swaddling cloths, yeah. A swaddling cloth, you, you tie the, the child's arms together, and then the way they fall asleep. A crib? Mm-hmm. Yes. 
some, oh, something to entertain the baby so they can look at it. So all kinds of gifts that are going to protect the parents. That's a good thing. That's a pet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, a fish? A, a pet of some kind. OK. All of those are good gifts. Uh, and I think what's important is that we bring a gift which can be you, and your friendship, and uh, your love. So let us bring those gifts to Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. This table is open to all who seek Jesus and who want to follow in Christ's way. So we invite you to come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because in your emptiness. You stand in need of God's grace and assurance. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. So come to this table, sisters and brothers, as you are. Partake and share, for this table is spread for you and for me that we might know that God has come to us shared our common lot, and invited us to join the people of God's new age. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life. You breathed the stars and cast the universes through the void of space, breathed life into the dust, and set the whole of your creation in order, in balance, and in progress to that point of perfection that only you know. We give thanks that you revealed yourself to humans through the burning bush and dreams and visions, leading and shaping your people until they were given freedom and justice through your blessings, law, and prophets. Even when we perverted those gifts, you came to us in Jesus, born of Mary and our brother. We thank you that Jesus shared our common lot, showed us how to live the fullness of life through loving others who were deemed unlovable. We thank you that Jesus lived true to your ways, even to the point where the powers of the world organized to torture and kill him. We rejoice in the mystery of the resurrection, that the grace of love overcame the structures of evil, and that in Jesus' appearance to his followers and the sending of the Holy Spirit, that we might experience his presence in our midst as we struggle with the costs and joys of discipleship. 
We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the Passover bread, symbolizing solidarity with all who suffer in the world, gave you thanks and broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant of my life. Drink this in remembrance of me. O oh, gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we may be salt and light and leavened for the furtherance of your will in all the world. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Come, for now all is ready. Come to this service of blessing. the body of Christ given in solidarity with all who suffer. The cup of salvation given to bless us in our discipleship. Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen.
Here we have received the gifts of Christ's love. Let us carry these gifts out into the world and bear witness to the Christ we have found here. Go in peace and serve our Lord. Amen. Thank you.